This is going to be a quick little video. I'm going to be doing a live draw of... Uh, I don't know yet. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Uh, I just finished up this. I'm going to adjust the camera. I just finished up this Alan the Alien. Um, this one was pretty fun. And earlier today, this morning, I did this sketch, but I had, which I had already had the uh, pencils for down yesterday. And I did this guy uh, this morning. That was my first sketch, my warm-up sketch. Uh, with warm-up sketches, I usually do something that incorporates uh, a lot of shapes, um, usually a face, something that is simple and fun. Uh, and pretty easy to do something I I know I can manage which is fun shapes and a head um, I'm not sure what I want to draw today or rather right now but um, there's a lot I could draw uh, my camera setup at the moment is that I have this placed on a salsa container but it is a tall one. Uh, effectively, it's a tall boy Tostitos chunky salsa container. And no, I will not show it on camera. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got back into watching Peter Draws. He's maybe one of the most popular, famous YouTube artists out there. And a lot of his work is very abstract in a lot of ways he plays with what seems like uh, an unlimited amount of shapes and line variety and tools and it's really remarkable um and i've been trying to use some of that influence into my work in little ways um and it's been interesting i've gone i've done a few pieces where i just go straight to inks and I just do shapes, patterns, textures. I try to do my best to make something that is incorporating as many different interesting textures and shapes as I possibly can. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, I was originally going to have this be the head. I was thinking of Invincible because uh, I drew uh, drawn Alan who is a character in Invincible, one of my favorites, design-wise. And then I was thinking of Invincible himself, but um, I've drawn Invincible many times throughout my life, ever since reading it for the first time in, I want to say, sophomore year of high school. And there's a lot you can do, but it's also just, you know, it's a... In the end, it's a cape character. You know, there's not too much interesting you can do with a superhero character. There's a lot you can do, but nothing I really want to do at the moment. I want to do something with shapes. So, um, with my pencils, just as a note, I try to keep them as loose as I possibly can. Um, I like to give a lot of leniency and leeway for my inks to kind of almost make up for the lack of detail in my pencils a lot of the time i keep them i always i always try to keep them as loose as possible my pencils same with my inks but the inks when i go in I, um they act as a means of ironing out what is there and finding what could be there like uh, right now, I added those spikes. I didn't draw those spikes in the sketch, but I thought, well, might as well add some spikes. I figured it could look interesting. Um, that's the way I try to keep my inks fresh. I try not to think too hard about it. And I go into it, and... I have my own techniques. I have a variety of inking patterns and shading that I have ingrained in my head that I can incorporate. And I don't usually like to know what they are 
before I start laying down inks. When I work on something like a comic page, for example, oftentimes there's more to think about and there's more to consider in regards to how each panel should look. So I like to plan those out a little bit more. But when it's just a sketch page like this, or even sometimes a commission, I most like to figure it out as I go along. I see, because there's a lot of things, working with an inkbrush, sorry if this is uh, uh, rambly, rambly of sorts, I'm trying to make this video, it doesn't matter. Uh, when I, my tools primarily are this Pentel pigment brush here, and the good old Pentel pocket brush. And when working with brushes, you you can probably see some of that now. You can get a, a good variety of line work and line quality. Um, if you drag it rather quick, you can get something dry with some spaces in between for some texture. You can go slow and thick to get those bold, deep black lines. And you can go rather either slow or quick with just the tip of the pen to get something that's small and crisp and able to do a lot of detail. That's what I love about it. And that's why I've spent the past few years spending a lot of time with brush pens and learning um, how best to use them. And I think if you are looking to increase the quality of your work, <laughs> maybe not quality, but when I first started using brush pens, it opened a lot of doors. I was scared of it. Not, not about scared, but it, my first brush pen proper was after I was talking to a friend of mine, Jacoby at a Starbucks. And he had actually this pen, this probably this exact uh, pen, the fine tip. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> because I had been drawing with like professional materials for a few years by then I was in high school and I was I had never messed with an ink brush and so I was like what in the world is this device and he was like oh yeah this is a brush pen that I use to fill in my blacks you know I, or rather spot blacks um, for big spots on a, a comic page or a sketchbook if you wanted to fill in something really quick you would use a pen and I, the, back then especially, and for a long time afterwards even, I did not spot my blacks. I did not do any heavy shading at all. I never filled in so heavily. Um, and if I did, it was very small because I had these Micron brush pens, which if you use those, you know they are rather limited in their scope. So I was like, oh my God, what is this? And so a little while after that, when I went to the art store next, I, I didn't get a Pentel pocket brush, I don't think. It was something very similar, but it kind of sucked, I think. And I started using it, and I was like, this stinks. I can't work this thing, but I think it's interesting, and I'm going to hold on to it. And I'll use it for little things. And I used it very sparingly for a long time. And then the following year, 2019 into 2020, I, I messed with brush pens a little bit more. I got an actual Pentel pocket brush. And I started learning. I started figuring things out with it. And I didn't start really using it as my primary tool until probably late 2020, maybe early 2021. And even then, a lot of the times, I still relied on pens like these Kuratakes, where if it would, it's not going to focus. Um, it's also a brush pen, but it's a f not fibrous, but. It has a rather hard tip, which is still soft, um, like these zebra brush pens as well. Very good, very reliable, but they do not have the amount of variety and capability as brush pens like these pigment brushes or the Pentel pocket brush. And so I've, I've said it, I've said it a number of times, but learning a brush pen saved my life. Um, not in any literal sense. There's no example of that. But if I hadn't 
began to learn these and really figure them out, I, I don't know. I think there's something extremely potent with what these are able to accomplish compared to any other type of pen. Like uh, before I started learning these, and even as I was learning them, I was still relying much on microns and those very thin pens. And there's a lot you can do with those. There's a lot you can do with those depending on your style. But I was not good with it. I was also just not good in general at that point. Uh, this was high school into after high school. I was very much so comfortable with microns because you could predict exactly what they were going to do. Brush pens, you could not predict. You can never predict. You can put a shit in the right direction. But if you mess up with a brush pen, that's like, oh, was that the brush pen or was that me? Because they do go bad over time. Uh, the tips get frayed. You lose some of that variety that you can get. And that's when you change. That's when you change the brushes. You get a new one. But they go for a long time. And you can do a lot with them as long as you got those refills. Okay, I think I have talked about brush pens long enough. Um, this page is, when I work on a sketchbook page, I, I've gotten a lot of, not a lot of questions, God forbid, uh, people don't really talk to me too much, but, um, I, I, I like to think that I can fill up a sketchbook in a good amount of time. Uh, I have this one book that I've been posting on Twitter the past couple of days, uh, that I've been working on the past week, and I was able to fill it up in about six days. It was a 52-page book. I only used one side of the paper. Usually I use both. Um, typically I do that with the pa paper that doesn't bleed over, like these moleskins. Those, these, these never bleed. Um, but that book that I was using does bleed, so I was like, you know what? It's against my nature. I don't like just using one side. I don't know why. I don't, but I really don't. Um, it freaks me out. It's like I want to be able to use the whole thing. But in that case, I, I ignored that block in my mind, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to use one side. And I was able to fill up those 52 pages in about six days, um, which equals out to almost like probably like seven pages a day. There's eight, I think. No, close, seven or eight, maybe six a day. And the way, the craziest thing is that I liked, I liked or even loved every single page. And not, not every sketchbook is like that. But when you find those and you're able to, to fill a book in, even if it's in a long amount of time and you like each, each page, that's incredibly special. That doesn't happen with a, every book. That doesn't happen with almost any book that you fill up. And it shouldn't. You, you should take issue with some of the things you draw because if you finish something and you're not happy with it, then you, the next thing you do, uh, you kind of know what not to do, where to improve. That is how you get a better eye for composition. That is how you learn how to better use your tools. Uh, that's how you get better with that. That's how you get better with anything. Draw bad things. Draw god-awful things. Draw the worst things imaginable, and you will be at that same time, drawing the best things you have ever drawn. I like to think, or I've been asked a few times, what my favorite piece is, uh, both by real people and online people, which, both real people, but point being, I've been asked a lot of times, a handful of times, a bunch of times, uh, what my favorite piece of mine is. And usually, every time I get asked that, I say, it's the most recent thing I've drawn. There are some pieces that stick out, and for a while, after I make them, I'm like, objectively, this is my favorite thing I've ever drawn. But more often than not, the mentality I take is uh, the most recent thing I've drawn is my favorite thing I've drawn because it is the most accurate and recent reflection of myself and my ability. If the most recent thing I've drawn maybe feels a little subpar to me, then, you know, I'll take that into consideration and I'll appreciate the aspects of it that are both good and bad because it's a reflection of where I'm at. If 
I don't like what I just finished, I will hold on to that thought, hold on to that feeling that is evoked from the lacklusterness of it, and I will use that to go on to the next piece and make something better, make something that works. Maybe I take a break for a little bit, a few hours, uh, ten, <laughs> 10 minutes. Maybe I just hop right into the next one, and maybe it's even worse. Maybe it's just as bad, and I'm like, dang. Well, on to, yeah, then I keep moving. I'm on to the next one, as it were. And my momentum is something that does get killed in time. But as a note, I have been drawing since the fifth grade, and I have in that time probably spent a total of one week of days not drawing um most time spent not drawing was maybe four days in 2019 and since then i've taken two days off of drawing in the past three years uh, every day outside of those i remember it. it's funny too because I can remember them distinctly. I can exactly remember the feeling. And it wasn't bad. Those two days in the past three years weren't bad. They were average. I just didn't feel like it. It just never occurred to me to pick up the paper and do something. And that kind of feeling is fine. If you don't feel inspired, if you don't think what you could create is what you would want to create, if you just would rather focus on something else. That is totally fine. Everybody who is willing to express themselves is also, um, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of, is, dang, what am, what am I trying to remember? Is deserving of time off and not drawing. Because the willingness to put yourself out there in that way to lay yourself bare and be willing to take what's in your head and put it to paper is an extremely strong attribute that not everybody can manage. Um, and being able to do it well and being able to foster it is something very special. I think anybody can draw. Anybody. Somebody asked me in, in, in person, somebody asked me, uh, do you think... Drawing is like a, a learned skill. And this is somebody who's not really associated or um, conscious in art. And they asked me if you think drawing is a learned skill. Like, is that something you can actually, like anybody can learn? And I told them, absolutely. It's my belief, based on my experiences and whatnot, that art is ingrained in all of us. Any one of us could become an artist. All it takes is the mindset. There are so many different forms of art, expressions, styles, and all of them unique to each person. The only thing stopping anyone from becoming an artist is the willingness to put yourself into your work. That isn't to downplay anyone who's not able to put themselves fully into their work or um, to say that if you're not constantly putting your nose to the, to the table, if you're not constantly putting the brush to the easel, it's, it's not the quantity or even the quality. It is simply the willingness to dedicate your mind space to that of art on a consistent basis, of any, any consistent basis. And the willingness to grow and to allow your style to grow alongside you and to foster it. All it needs is care and love and attention. You can study. You can like actively work to get better. You can do all these things to literally improve your work. But your work and your art and your style are, I, I think, two different things. When you create something, put it to paper, that is you utilizing your... I don't know what I'm saying. Point, <laughs> uh, point being... Anyone can be an artist, anyone can cook, and all it takes is the mindset. The mindset is the real determination of it all. If you want to draw, draw. If you don't want to draw, don't draw. That's what makes everybody different. 
Everybody is driven by different things. If I didn't have art in my life, even if at times my art is very simple, you know, simple, simple little means of what it is. Like when I draw violence or superheroes or very straightforward comics or just a meme picture, it's like in my head, I'm like, well, what's, 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 what's really, what am I saying here? What's really like, am I that serious of an artist? Like, am I really, what am I doing? Like, what, how should I be presenting myself in all honesty? But it's, there's something special about being an artist. And if I didn't have that aspect of my life, I don't know where I'd be. And so I will never let go of it. Um, yeah. Um, I might try in the future to make more, maybe even edited content when I have more time. But as of now, making these short little rambles as I sketch, this one's pretty close to done. Um, it's pretty easy. And I think it's good. If you think it's good to see the process and whatnot, uh, along with whatever thoughts bounce into my brain, I I kind of enjoy making it. This seems this seems fun. Uh, I've done this once before on this channel, and I think I could do more actual like educational content about drawing, or really anything. So I'll have to think up more ideas, but as of now, I don't want to make this video go on too long. 20 minutes is already pretty long, but tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me how you thought of the video. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, uh, what you would like to see me do later. If you learned anything, if you would rather me talk about different topics or less introspection, more introspection, uh, I'd want to hear it. Uh, so that way I can make more interesting things and I can make what you want to see, viewer, whoever you may be. Um, yeah. Okay, at some point, I, I get to a point where I feel like I'm just fudging the numbers on a drawing and just working it until it is to the ground. Okay, let me just... Um, what else could I do here? Yeah, it's... it's With these heavier, detailed drawings, it's a lot more to consider compositionally. Uh, because recently I've been very focused on composition. The past year or so I've been very much uh, putting my nose to the grindstone in regards to composition and making my things more readable because that's always been my issue the past I don't know six years ever since like ever since I started showing my work around at shows it was always readability especially in my comics and so recently ever since 2020 when I went to C2E2 and the main note I got from all the artists I showed my work to was readability and eliminating what was unnecessary it opened my eyes and I really focused on learning all that and in the past year or so I think I've made massive steps towards that it's been great but I think this piece is almost done let me add one more thing before I lose my mind usually I would put text over this I think but I don't think I will because I did not put it in already. And thus I can't. Okay, okay, I said that was it. Let me just... But yeah, uh, this will be the end of the video. 25 minutes seems still pretty long, but I hope you enjoyed listening to me speak, watching me draw. Um, my diction and words might be a little bit uh, incoherent at times, a little bit, hopefully not mumbly. I like to think I can enunciate pretty decent, but there's some filler words and whatnot, so 
if you made it this far, honestly, if you didn't skip out at like even the five minute mark, ten minute mark, but good up on you. But there's the piece. No name for it. But I think it was pretty fun, and I hope you enjoyed watching me sketch it. Thank you.